Hey everybody, it is 10.01 and I wanna thank everybody for joining. Um, I'm excited about what we're about to talk about here and pleased to introduce my new friend, Ben Garcia. Ben, welcome, how you doing? I'm doing great, thanks for having me on. Oh, hey, thanks for coming, man. Let me explain everybody how this started. About, uh, I guess a month ago, there was this uh, really interesting stadium design that was floating around Twitter for a minute, literally. But I think only one person mentioned part of your, Ben's name <laughs> and not much about Ben. And it was all very cryptic. And I thought, okay. And then as fast as it was introduced, it went away. Then it went, it came up again just about, oh, might not you two weeks after it was announced that the Athletics had put down an offer on land in Las Vegas, but they didn't say where. I asserted that based on evidence here, here, and but primarily pointing to Phil Ruffin, that it was the Las Vegas Festival Grounds. Others had other ideas, and then uh, Contessa Brewer of MSNBC was in Sea Caucus, New Jersey, and met someone there who seemed to have that they thought were the dibs on what the property was. And they said it was next, it was the Tropicana hotel owned by Bally's. That was not confirmed by the A's. None of these have been confirmed or denied by the athletics to this point, but someone else found Ben's design and made it the focus of an article post, but they didn't mention Ben's name, which I thought was odd. However, I looked up Stadium 51, I found Ben's website, I reached out, contacted him, and immediately made this effort because I think it's criminal to introduce someone's good idea and not talk about them. I don't know where we have, I don't even want to say evolved to in this society where that's okay. In my book, it's not okay. Uh, I think Ben's done an incredible job I can say that there are some very important people now who are interested in what Ben has done. I can, I'll leave it at that. Uh, and he's already on to big, bigger and better things as it were, but I want you to see what other bigger and better things he has planned because Ben has a vision for the future of baseball and the future of sports that is path breaking. And with respect to baseball as path breaking as Camden Yards was when it was do, introduced in 1993, really technically 1992 before it was actually built. So Ben, hey, welcome, man, and um, yeah, yeah. glad you're here. Yeah, I know. Again, thanks for having me on. And it's been, yeah, it's been a crazy past two weeks or so, as you mentioned, right? Three weeks or so, right? That's when it was started surfacing around, you know, Twitter and the internet. And it, it was kind of interesting, though. Everything just like culminated at like the right time for me, or you know, for this thing to be shared. Um, it started off with actually Arash Markazi. He's a reporter. And I saw he posted you know, on Twitter saying that the Oakland A's are planning to announce a potential site in Vegas after the World Series. And after he posted that, I just said, you know, what? I'm just going to reach out and message him on Twitter. I'm not big on Twitter. And so I just sent him a simple message. I said, hey, Arash, like these are a couple images. And, you know, I think it'd be pretty cool for, you know, a concept, you know, for a Vegas, you know, baseball stadium to be placed here. And he said, yeah, this is great. Can I share it? And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. And that kind of started a snowball effect. And, you know, other uh, Twitter accounts started reaching out to me and said, can we share it? So there was a little bit of that. But then we started seeing, right, other uh, reports. They started, you know, taking the image and they didn't, you know, no credit or anything, you know, but but in a way, you know, that was kind of cool, you know, in, in my opinion, I, I just saw my image out there. I mean, yeah, it was, I was a little bit bummed out that, you know, I wasn't tagged in it, but nonetheless, you know, it's just cool that, you know, it was being shared. Yeah. You were bummed out. I was pissed. Hey, so tell, <laughs> <laughs> so tell my yeah. viewers how you came up with a stadium 51 concept to begin with. And let me know when you want to share it or, uh, or, or you can share it as we talk, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, for sure. I mean, look, you know, I'm sure it's like many people, right? Uh, 2020 was a difficult year for many of us. Um, first started off with, you know, 
uh, I was laid off, unfortunately. And during that time, you know, I said, you know what, I'm going to take everything I learned from my time at the, you know, my, uh, at the at the firm I was at and just apply all that knowledge. And I said, you know, I'm going to stick it to uh, baseball stadiums. And, you know, it just started with a, a bunch of series of studies and just trying to problem solve, like, how, what is the next generation of baseball stadiums, right? As you mentioned, right, Camden Yards was revolutionary for its time. And, you know, I, you know, it, it's fantastic that we're starting to see these new ballparks like Texas and Atlanta Braves, right, that they're integrating with the city that they're in. Um, but I felt like, you know, we want, I, you know, we need a, a fresher breath there, right? And so that's where this study came to be, right? We're starting to uh, introduce a lot of roofs. Um, and, you know, the, the, the idea was to, how do we reduce the size of it? And that's what led to all these series of studies. And I could, we can share some of those ideas right now. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, by the way, you meant breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Stumbling in my words. It's late. It's, 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 it, it's Friday. It's seven o'clock, man. Word. I'm ready to get out. You created a new word. Fresh of breath air. I'm going <laughs> to. That's cool, man. I like that. That's See, you're a genius just by existing, you know. <laughs> All uh, right, let's see. How do I let's see? How do I share this? Let's see. Entire screen. No, let's go entire screen. OK, if you get, I think um, there we go. There you go. Yeah. Because we'll, this will push it all aside automatically. Oh, there it is. And uh, it's uh, add to stream. Da -da. Exactly. And so this is kind of how the, the stadium concept we're seeing, right? The Stadium 51, the one that's being shared around. It started off with a simple idea. Now, keep in mind, it was like, you know, I didn't say there, there wasn't a site assigned to this, right? It was let me focus on a really cool concept. And, you know, I felt as you can see from this image right here, we already have the Death Star. Why not make it a starfighter? So that's kind of like where it all started from. Uh, drawing inspirations from different stadiums and architects and different designs. And I felt like, you know, it had to be something out there. If you're going to go crazy, why not do it in Vegas, right? It just fits the vibe. Exactly. And again, playing with the, the whole Area 51, right? It's, it's this whole mystique, mysteriousness about it. It's like, you know, this is perfect, right? This is a one-of-a-kind stadium. Let's let's play to that lore of Area 51. And again, drawing inspiration from car designs as far as, you know, they have the appearance of looking fast, even when they're not in motion. And so I felt it was very important that the, the shell, the design of the ballpark itself had that aesthetics to it. And drawn inspirations from you know the Sapporo Dome over in, in Tokyo, right? It just looks like it's out of this world, right? Just this blob, this dome. And you know, coming up with concept sketches and kind of getting the the look and feel of it. But at the same time, keeping the interior right true to baseball, you know, tying in with the the classic geometric shape, right? So it's it, it's that cool contrast that really intrigued me about. This, this whole concept and tying it in with pin, with the pinball machine, right? It's a very simple box design if you think about it, but in the inside it's very creative and cool. And so anyway, let's get to the, the final con, the final images, right? And wow. this, is, this is the one, right, that people are talking wow. about at the moment. And That's again, yeah, and, it, and again, look, it's it wasn't never intended for this site. It was more for like an open plot of land, like you see here, right? This is further south, where you would have future development, right? Take place and, and build itself around this 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 foreign shape, right? You know, that was actually the original site for what is now Legion Stadium off I-15. This was the original site, or this was the proposed site, really? That was the original proposed site. Yeah, there's an artist rendition of the stadium right there. Awesome. Yeah, that that's is a good. good. Yeah, it's a good spot. I that, like. I saw it. And I'm like, hey, it's open piece of land. Why not? Right. And you can imagine right future development taking place. You know, all around it. Um, because I mean, either the ballparks that we're seeing today are they're, they're starting to plug into its its uh, its the, the the existing conditions, right? 
-hmm. Whereas, you know, we're no longer seeing like the cookie cutter stadiums that are out in the middle of a parking lot right now. It's, it's tying into the urban, you know, city conditions, right? And this is kind of going against that, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's just taking another look at, hey, well, why not start with the shell, start off with the design and, you know, build off of that. Well, by the way, just to give people an idea where you're, if you go back one, if that's possible, uh, where we are in reality is Elysian Stadium is actually up at freeways I-15. It is up four stops. And, and yeah, if actually where you got, you're circling it right there. That's where it is. So they would actually be, if it were there, forming kind of a sports corridor, you know, interestingly. Um, go ahead, Ben. Just wanted to point that out. No, for sure. And I actually wanted to share this real quick with you guys. Uh, not this, it's this one right here. <laughs> so I just like a quick Photoshop wow. of it and I moved it right into the Tropicana. That's cool. Site. That is cool. That You know what? That would be one of the, the most photographed structures in the entire world if it were built. You know, and it's also like, you know, I, I thought it would be so cool for, you know, not just, you know, for a sporting event, but even like opportunities for, you know, movies Right, like you could imagine this coming out, you know, in, in like a space movie or something. I don't know. I just thought it was just so cool. I'd love to see this. Yeah, that it is some. It really captures the imagination and mm -hmm. it, it forms a a kind of a um, a venue device that you, you want to go up to and see. You know, want to you want to go across the street to see what it's all about. You know. Oh, for sure, for sure. And, you know, and what's kind of funny is, right, like this is the strip and the the reason why it's orientated this way, right, is the backside of it, this would be the space right here. Mm -hmm. So the roof, right, during game time, right, you could have it closed or if you want it open, right, this is open air and then you could have it closed and again it's it's just that really cool space this is this would be right on the strip right i think it's very mm -hmm. important to have that open you know space for you know concerts or you know pre-game festivities to take place so give us an idea what is that space doing is that a is that kind of a meeting area before you go in or what is that is uh in the scheme of things I mean, like this is this is once again, right? Like, I always felt that you know the home plate entrance is always the ceremonial, like, mm. right, mm -hmm. open door, right? Like, this takes you to the game. But however, we're starting to see, you know, you enter from right field or you enter from the third base corner, right? There isn't a very big emphasis on the home plate presence, mm. and so I felt, you know, what by changing the orientation of the field and again making home plate this ceremonial entrant entryway right i think mm -hmm. it's very important and it's easy as far as like wayfinding right you know where to go in you know where to come out you know where you are in the scheme of things right you're not lost looking you know where's the exit oh where mm -hmm. did i park it's like okay no let's go behind home plate that's where the entrance is very simple um approach to it let's see something else wow yeah and again like th with this concept i went you know i i I had plenty of time to like fully flush this out or, you know, have actual dimensions to it. We know how many seats there are. Um, it, it works in, for baseball, like as far as like outfield dimensions, seating, we're, we're right at that 30,000, 35, yeah, 30,000 to 35,000 seat capacity. And again, it's all about the, like the image, the shape of it, right? Just trying mm -hmm. to capture the, something completely different right out of this world um aesthetics to it that you know you wouldn't you wouldn't think this is a baseball stadium and, and yet that, and that's the goal what was that and yet i was just going to say it, it really if you think of allegiance stadium as sort of the context uh, mm -hmm. because in vegas uh i think it's easier to form your own context don't you think uh but mm -hmm. If Allegiant Stadium is setting the tone for the kind of sleek sports design where it's like a race car, yeah, um, yeah. this takes that and really, instead of making a race car, it makes it a spaceship. It takes what it takes the Death Star as you were presenting. Mm -hmm. It really forms it into a a nice kind of design theme that might set the tone for you know 
facilities in the future in Las Vegas. I mean, and, and right, like this is Vegas. You you have the Eiffel Tower, <laughs> you have yeah. the Statue of Liberty. I mean, I feel like you can do that kind of stuff right, in right, Vegas, right. man. And, right. You know, whether you love it or hate it, you know, and I think it just fits perfectly. I mean, it's, yeah, and that's why I was gay as from in terms of saying that it, you know, fits it sets its own context because mm-hmm. you know. Uh, that's right. You don't. You didn't know this. I actually started off in architecture school, but uh, we talked about, you know, context, right? But Vegas, you can really build your own context. You can be your own context, huh? No, for sure, for sure, right? Like, again, <laughs> we just wanted. To, I wanted to have fun with this, and you know, I think I think this this is by far one of my favorite designs that I've, I've done so far. Talk about this one. What is this uh, particular? No, for sure. Right, right. So starting off, right, we just wanted to see, well, I wanted to see, like, how can you strip down the stadium in general, right? Like, what is, like, the bare minimum you would need, right? And this, you know, I have to, let me go back. Let me go back to explain this a little bit. Sure, yeah. Um, I, you know, I have diagrams for this. But it's, you know, it's important to actually start from the beginning. I will go here. So here, it started off with this simple diagram, right? And this simple question, right? Like, what do um, every ballpark, what do they have in common, right? What's common is like, they have like this grandstand in the background, and then you have the central vision, which is the outfield backdrop, right? The only thing that makes each stadium like very unique and different is that outfield backdrop. And I felt like, you know what, let's expand our peripheral vision, right? Like, what about the left corner? What about the right corner, right? Beyond the foul poles, right? Let's start to explore, you know, the possibilities there of creating different seating amenities, different products, right? That way you have a different experience if you were sitting in third base side or the first base side, right? It's like, oh, um, now we have four different zones or potentially eight different zones if you want to get technical with like center field right field, left field, left corner, right corner, first base, third base, and then home plate, right? You're creating eight unique possibilities, right? Hmm. Hmm. And again, right here, this diagram, it's explaining that concept again, right? You have two different zones. This is traditional ballparks. And right here, you have a Safeco Field or AT&T Park, I believe it's called, or T-Mobile Park, I believe it's called. In Seattle. Mm-hmm. Where the matters Seattle. Play. Exactly. And that roof span is about 660. So, you know, keeping it very simple, it's like, okay, smaller roof is going to be less cost, right? Mm -hmm. And that is what this diagram is explained right here. If Mm -hmm. you take the roof, you rotate it, you compress it, Mm -hmm. you're going to subtract the two zones. Now you have created four unique zones. And not only that, but you've also reduced the cost of your roof. That's a brilliant right. idea, Ben. So, exactly. So not only, right, like you're you're just rechanging the way we look at the parts, right? Mm-hmm. And so with that, let's go back to here to kind of, you're, you'll see it clearly now, right? Again, there's four unique zones to it, or you can say eight, right? Home plate, mm-hmm. first base side, the right corner, right field center, so on and so forth. All right. And then again, with we wanted to go or I wanted to go with like this arc structure. I felt, you know what, let's get rid of the columns, right? Stick this is mm-hmm. this is drawing inspiration from the Cowboys Stadium, ATT Park, or was ATT Stadium, right? For the Cowboys play. Mm-hmm. And and you know, they have this same system, except the, the arc structures are a lot closer. Yeah. What's, what's also interesting though is their roof slopes about 25 degrees. And mm-hmm. to pull that roof right back up, all you need is a Corvette engine, which mm-hmm. is pretty insane. And the slope on these arc structures is about 15 degrees. So look, not you know we're less, so we have the technology. We can do something as such, right? And mm-hmm. the beauty of this is again, you don't have any columns, so those corners, right? You can move those the structure in closer and have seats underneath, and you won't have any columns obstructing your view. I think if this were built, that would probably be one of the longest continuous trust spans in the world. Potentially, I believe it's man, I'll have it's almost like seven hundred. I think seven hundred feet. Okay, yeah, I think. Um, let me think. Um, 
I mean, it'd be pretty close though, because the Cowboys Stadium is pretty big. Yeah, Texans so, have Texans is a nine hundred and sixty-two feet. Yeah, so um, it'd be interesting to do right. To, yeah. I mean, not only that though, but like even here at the center point, you could get away with putting a column in the middle mm -hmm. if you really wanted to. And it's uh, not. I'm not. And when I say that, mm -hmm. folks, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I, it's just a matter of just being a sort of a nerd about this. <laughs> that's that's all. <laughs> and, and and also just to marvel at how our technology has allowed this kind of structure to be built, you know? Um, and then and then you see the finished product here. What What is that sheathing? Because we're in this area where, era mm -hmm. where we have the, the kind of, uh, is this the kind of material that's used on the Raiders Stadium and SoFi Stadium, or is this different? Oh, it definitely can. I mean, look, this is, as we all know, this is a conceptual design, but definitely mm -hmm. keeping that in mind that this is Vegas heat, right? So definitely had to, you know, be prepared for that, you know, that climate. And you don't want it to be also um, reflective either. I mean, you, you know, you can only imagine the problems that would cause. So some kind of like clean uh, metal for sure. It almost looks like an armadillo, you know? Yeah, and see, that, that's the one thing I like. Is, you know, people have like different interpretation of what this thing looks and that, that that's the goal, right? It's, you know, some people say, hey, this thing looks like a shark. This thing looks like a... a a, uh, what is it? A cockroach killer, right? <laughs> like the. <laughs> um, I was thinking armadillo because of the heat issue. Uh huh. It has the shell. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then you see armadillos in the desert, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> hey, see that, that, and that's cool, right? Like you, you have like your, you know, you see it one way, other people see it another way, and I think that's great. You know, it lets people use their imagination. Yeah, and it's functional. It was what I like about it. It looks to me, mm -hmm. it. If they say form follows function. It looks like it was built so that you could enjoy baseball, oh, even for sure. you know, uh, and step into this new world. For sure. Also, like as you can tell by like the roof structure, right? It's purposely, you know, it has these fins on it, right? And that is to allow natural lighting because at the same time, right? If you're playing inside a dome, I mean, it's not the best, and you would like at least some sort of natural lighting coming through but at the same time you have to be well aware that you know the players right they can lose the ball if that if you know if it goes up in the roof and then you have like the structure and then the sun getting the, you know, it, it's going to cause the players to lose the ball once it goes up so the the way the the fins are angled is for that purpose so the outfielders will not lose the ball but at the same time the fans they'll have a view out to the sky hmm. so and that was actually uh, inspired from the DeLorean. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. The back of it. Again, like there's some yeah. car inspiration behind this. Now, also one little note, you know, do I really think that this is the best conceptual design or, you know, the skin for this part of for this stadium? I don't think so. I think a car designer can come in and do a far better job than I can. However, I will say that, you know, it, it was because that, you know, we set up this new chassis, if you will, right, mm -hmm. that allows people to have that creativity of now going in and molding it, right? The yeah. hard part was trying to figure out, right, how do we compress the stadium? How do we make it to a compact size to allow for the roof to be, you know, to be reduced and have the symmetrical look to it? So, so now have, you... I'm sorry, guys. What I found fascinating, I was just going to ask, on the, uh, mm -hmm. the forward most portion of that photograph, uh, in what appears to be this lobby area, uh, in this, this inside, this actually portion. down a bit, right? Uh, it's like this clear. It, it's on the. Uh, I want to say the, the the most, uh, the most forward part of it, on the side, on the side, and right here. yeah, right there, yeah, right there, that right there. Is that what is that an entrance area? It looks like it's a lot of space that mm -hmm. could be for court what, what you're thinking about about that space sure. it's pretty cool oh yeah yeah it's cool it's it's to have like you know four entryway points you know, to enter the ballpark you have the main ceremonial home plate entrance and then you got the right corner left corner and then outfield of course but also you know if you wanted to have retail shops right something on the side you definitely can so again it really activates this home plate uh entrance again right where you have these you know shops surrounding it so yeah, that was the, the that's the idea for that. Hmm. I'm ready when you are to go on, or the other one. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Oh, for sure. Now the rest are just like fly through images of the 
the model itself and just like rethinking about, you know, what is a VIP entrance for home plate, right? Where the dugout is actually separated, where you're actually able to, you know, come to the club, walk through, come to the other side, you know, here's a bar over here and you're actually able to see the players, hmm. you know, having BP batting practice. And, you know, you can imagine like watching the players like walk through, you know, the tunnel into the dugout back to their clubhouse. Hmm. Is again, like we're seeing this a lot like in soccer, right? Where, you know, or football even, right? Where you have that VIP club and then you see the players that are running out. I feel like, you know, why not, you know, have the same thing for baseball? Yeah, Cowboy Stadium actually has that where the players actually go through a corridor and you can see them on either side. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I love this. I love this design. I really do. Yeah, and again, like we can be versatile with this with this design as well. You can either have a video board, giant video board in the front or even in the sides. There's actually a stadium that's actually very similar to this where I saw it the other day. It's actually in Tokyo and it it's it's a pretty wild design. But um anyways, this this right here, right? It's again just more you know, observation. That's kind of wild. I didn't intend to, but I can't resist. You know. I know that Bjark Ingels has its design for Howard Terminal, but I actually like this better. <laughs> you know, I really like this better because I was thinking, God, this would look majorly cool sitting there, you know, on the waterfront, right? Uh, and you can see it across the bay, and it looks like it looks like a spaceship landed in Oakland. You know, I'm just I was just saying. It's I know it's not, you know I I know the A's have already far down their path and all that, but. I mean, you know, what if, right? I mean, who can exactly. say? Exactly. Exactly, right? We we don't know what the future holds, right? So right, right. We 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 are the shapers of our future. You know, at least I hope. Yeah. <laughs> and for uh, yeah, for this concept, right, it's a similar idea, right? What happens if we rotate it so it has this asymmetric, right? Does it need to follow it? What are the pros of it? I mean, looking at it, you're actually, you know, you're actually reducing the span of the roof. If you were actually to rotate it, which is also look, that's huge. So you're saying like it would be like this kind of coming in. Yeah. So if we go here, right, this is how it is currently, but yeah. because, but because, look, there's so much space as you can see right here. Mm -hmm. You could bring it even. You could bring it in even closer to each other. Ah, I get you. Yeah, I get you. The same things here, right? This is just me, you know, making critiques, right? This is like, a yeah. quick, again, these are all studies at the end of the day, right? It's like, look, okay, cool. We now, this allows me to have like a giant curtain glass wall. Okay, cool. We can move a couple of seats. You can move a video board here in the center field. Uh, you know, we see this a lot, like in, in pro baseball, they have a video board in center. So, hey, um, I'm curious, have you, I, you probably haven't, but maybe you have, is there a calculation of how much money you save by? The reduction in size of the of the roof there well that's a great question i mean i can only imagine like you know if you're if you're cutting it down by a hundred feet mm -hmm. like that is you know i can't i can't even you know i i wouldn't even know where to begin with that yeah i would think that if you took the total cost of the roof and then you just simply uh well yeah if you're going to reduce it by 20 feet then theoretically you reduce yeah. it by you reduce it by 20 well, if you reduce it by 10%, then theoretically you reduce the cost by 10%. You know, it doesn't, I don't know if it actually works out that way. You'd know better than I do after figuring out how to cost it out. But, you know, uh, it just seems like it's headed in that direction proportionally. Hey, all I know is if it's smaller, it's less. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about yeah. the party. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it gives you that, right? Like, this is Vegas. Like, what, you know, it just makes a whole lot of sense to have some sort of, like, you know, like I said, party deck, like you have in Coors Field, um, where they have like that, that really cool, um, like, restaurants on top of Wright Field. Um, you're starting to see this just about everywhere in MLB, in the Chicago Cubs, or not, not the Cubs, uh, the Cardinals, right? They have their, um, like, little street and restaurants out in the back. And so, like, again, just creating unique experiences coming to the ballpark. I wonder if if anyone – I wonder if uh, – I don't know if gaming regulations would, would permit this, but how about that having it as a, as a casino deck, you know? Oh, for sure. I mean, this is Vegas. I mean, you want to throw in a casino? I mean, look, gambling's legal here. Why not? 
Yeah. So definitely, we're again like these concepts are just showing you know the possibilities of what can be right. Like because there's like, enough you, room you for that. Have it. In a number of places, uh, the the mm -hmm. side entrance you showed us before that upper deck right. area, you know, I, that's ultimately um, mm -hmm. well, the people of you know th that's ultimately uh, the execs of baseball call. I'm just thinking out loud, you know. So I, uh, you're the boss, and where you you, yeah. you can you control what we want to see. So you let me know you where we're going next side. <laughs> Uh, just real quick, I just wanted to touch up on this one. Um, this was like a previous study I did, wow. where you know, trying to see what happens if you were to mix, you know, soccer and baseball, because soccer is growing here in the United States. <laughs> and so I said, you know what? Let, let's see what happens if we combine the two together. Oh, wait a second. Are you are you saying that that's a retractable field? Yeah, exactly. Just, look, we have the technology. Yeah. We have, yeah. the te you know, we're doing it with the Raiders of Arizona. Right. Why not for baseball? And let's see if I have different images, but um, you, you get the idea, right? You have yeah. the three corners where let, let me get a better angle of it. Uh, let's, uh, let's because Las that. Vegas is actually uh, their Las Vegas executives. Uh, I know Stephen Hill, I believe, has been working on Major League Soccer as well. And I think there's an area for a stadium that's supposed to be built, but I don't know if that's certain. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, so and, it was at the right time. Yeah, and I mean, like, what's unique about this placement is you actually have three sections of seating that are parallel to the soccer field, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of the the problems you run into when trying to integrate both baseball and soccer is you're gonna you're gonna run into the issue where either the first baseline and the third baseline are not, as far as seating goes, are not running parallel with the soccer field right there is there, say that, show that how that how that how that how that works how that no, let's do this let me show you real quick let's go sure. uh soccer field because i think i know what you mean but i gonna make sure that the viewer has an idea too you know sure i remember they had a soccer game at dodger stadium mm -hmm. i'm trying to see yeah okay they've had football games at uh Giant Stadium in, in San Francisco too, the XFL. I mean, as you can kind of see right where my mouse is right here, mm -hmm. this is the shape of the field. And as you can see, right, the seating, you're at an angle. It's not running perpendicular to the, or it's not parallel, right, with the, 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 the soccer field itself uh, right. on, both, on both sides, right? Even the outfield, even, uh, you know, to a certain point, you don't have any retractable seating that can, you know, you could move up. Mm -hmm. um, so that is what this is doing, right? Like you have all the seats that are parallel to the field itself, with the exception of the third base side. Mm -hmm. Third base side is the only outlier in this. But, hmm. right, and again, you can have, again, suites here, hotel, I don't know, offices, um, the possibilities, right? Could be you know whatever you like, and that's thanks to the structure through to uh, of, of the the stadium itself, the shell. Hmm. And that's where it opened up, and wow. Yeah, yeah this one's actually. You got a naming rights agreement in there, Amazon, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, man. I, I said, you know what? I, I I don't know why the the name just came to me. I'm like, hey, you Jeff, know, you go Amazon. There you go. So you can kind of see like a little animation of it, right? How things would, you know, how it'll come through and how the seats would actually come out. And again, right, this actually gives you a better view, right, of seeing how these seats, they run parallel with the field, the supporter mm -hmm. section, and along the, the first base side. Now, what? we're not in Las Vegas anymore with this, are we? No. And again, this is, this, these are just a, a study. Just for kind of a massing, I guess a massing concept, right? Kind of a a massing yeah. concept. No, yeah. Sure. Okay. okay. So a lot of the a lot of these uh, projects that I do, a lot of these studies, they're not really in in a specific city mm -hmm. for the most part. Again, it was just the the idea of like how do you reduce the the roof, right? It started off with this one, this uh, this concept right here, and again, I'm just going over. The different roof spanning of different ballparks, right? 
Um, the, the Brewers, right, they have a unique roof, but they're spanning 650 feet. Uh, the Rogers Center is 680 feet. Uh, Miami is actually the smallest spanning roof in all of baseball right now. Hmm. And so drew a lot of inspiration from this one as well and just trying to see how can we make it smaller, hmm. right? And you have Globe Life Field with the Texas Rangers play. That's 640 feet spanning roof. Um, and again, just going back to, you know, tying back uh, to history, right, of, of baseball stadiums in the past, right, like Polo Grounds, and uh, I don't know, not many people probably know about this one, but South End Grounds, this is where the Boston Red Stockings played. Hmm. Uh, it was only six years, six year lifespan, but um, this actually kicked off what we now see today where the grandstand, there is a, a significant emphasis on uh, the back, the backside of uh, home plate. Hmm. It's a really cool, really cool ballpark. Right. And again, this is just studying uh, and not a real site, but again, mm -hmm. just seeing how it'll fit in this square lot. Right. Kind of a massing study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, the forward zone. So this one actually kicked off mm -hmm. for the Stadium 51. Right. This one has the columns. And, you know, I said, you know what, how do we get rid of them? How do we, you know, improve the design? Always improving. Right. Just trying to mm -hmm. do something different. Hmm. Well, this is the this is where we're at <laughs> wow. with this concept. I like again, I think it's a really cool one. So, so now you've got something new, right? Oh, for sure, for sure. You know, we'll we'll, we'll go to that. So, me and my buddy, we actually, you know, I just hit him up. This is, up. Thing, you, this is the new thing. So, oh, this is this is this is in the works for sure. This I remember works. He, this is in the know, works. This is new. You called me. You called me on when or Sunday it was not, not this past Sunday, but the the previous one. Oh, Mark sure. this, folks. This is the new section. Okay, now we go back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> so, so you know, we've only we only had six days to really model and work this out, and then like you know, two three days of post production. Um, but I mean, I just have to say, my friend James James Bedencore, uh, he he stepped up and he said, yeah, sure, I'll I'll help you out. And it started off with the simple idea of what happens if, you know, Vegas were to infect a baseball stadium or what is the influence Vegas would have on a baseball stadium hmm. and drawing back to, you know, what are some designs that are unique and very compelling, right? As much, you know, I, I do like the big concept, right? I think it's unique. It's thinking outside the box. It's saying like, yeah, why not? Why don't we have a green roof, right? You know, that's a, such a cool, unique feature, especially for like a human for, you know, human inter, uh, experience. And uh, just going also to the, this Brooklyn Dodgers uh, earlier concept back. This was back in the 1950s, right before they moved to L.A. They wanted to propose this UFO stadium. And again, it's if this was built, like it would be an iconic feature today. I mean, it's so out there. And so. Again, taking these three different ideas, right? The Brooklyn concept, the Oakland uh, Howard Terminal uh, concept, and then taking Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. This is what you end up with. Wow! Like this, this is this is oh, what we. That is something else, man. <laughs> that is next level. The USS Las Vegas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, and this is that playing is with the USS Enterprise, you know, Star Trek, you know, still oh, right. sticking with that right. space theme. Right. Uh, huh. Yeah, but yeah, so again, like it's taking that the, that green roof inspiration that we saw, you know, from the Oakland A's and then taking that, that UFO shape from Brooklyn Dodgers, right, and, and just applying it here and, you know, just making this thing pop. And the, the whole idea for the dome itself is, is also for it to be like this one giant LED screen. And it just felt, you know, it just works here in Vegas. It's, it's it almost like the MSG sphere, right? What was that? Like the MSG sphere we talked about, right? Oh, exactly. I, I do bring that up actually, but you know, we have the technology, you know, it just seems like, you know, why not bring it into a ballpark? And this is also that uh, the other side we talked about, uh, I remember you mm -hmm. mentioned, Mm -hmm. uh, over in Circus Circus, right? And just giving mm -hmm. it 
you know, it, it works. I feel, I feel like it'll fit. And, you know, just playing with the, you know, the LED screen, right? You can only imagine the shows and the, the items that you could have displayed. So tell people, because someone might look at that and think that you're just popping these images in and out, but tell them what that's supposed to represent so that they don't get, so that they understand. In, in terms of, in terms of what do you mean represent? It's a little like you have the baseball there and mm -hmm. then you have another image on top of it. Some, tell them what that is supposed to be. Because I mean, as dumb as it sounds, some people might mm -hmm. miss that. What is that? That idea? Well, I mean, you can just imagine, right? Like if there was a concert in here, right? You could actually display that concert, right? It's being shown on TV. You could have it displayed outside. So, right. If you have like that Goodyear blimp, right? Flying around, it could, you know, yeah. show this on TV and again, you know, there's only oh so many seats, you know, at a ball game. There are a million people watching the game across the country, right? And so just being able to have that extra wow factor from, you know, that, you know, that perspective from the TV, I think it's just huge. And also you can imagine what that'll do for the hotel rooms, right, in Vegas, right? If you if you have a hotel, if you have a room close to this, you have a pretty cool view of the, of the game itself, yeah. of the sure. show. I'm thinking if the the fountain blue, I believe, is across the street from this, right? Yes, I believe so. Yes, it's 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 over here. So there you go. So you actually have given us, uh, well, that that view is actually taller than the fountain blue, but mm -hmm. it's, still, it's still about that angle, right? Yeah, from yeah, for sure. And then you could also look at, I mean, think about th this corner right here. This is right uh, the MGM Grand, uh, the New York, New York, and the uh, I'm drawing the name. It's, was it Excalibur? Is it? Yeah, yeah. Now, folks, we're on the other side of town now because that's the mm -hmm. uh, the other one where the fountain blue oil is North right. Strip. This is South. We're back to South Strip with this one. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah. No, for sure. But again, right? Imagine you have a room here, right? You look mm -hmm. outside. Now you have this object, right? That's displaying all these images, and you know, again, you're just adding more value, that more experience to your stay over in Vegas. The count just went up. <laughs> Number of viewers. Welcome, everybody. Isn't this yeah. cool? <laughs> right and look again it starts like this is all those who just showed up uh and and yeah yeah folks this is ben's newest concept he calls it the uss las vegas and uh you're seeing it in two different areas this one is at the las vegas fairgrounds this one is at the tropicana site right ben right right, right exactly ahead. this is the tropicana uh the tropicana site and this is back at the the fairgrounds correct mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Right. And again, you know, it starts off with a sketch, starts off with, a, you know, just reworking, it, you know, this is not by any means a finished product, right? We've only had a couple of days to really work on this, you know, but we feel like we've got, you know, we're at a really good start. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, but this is also to, you know, to start a conversation, right? You know, make people question, like, is this something we would want? Is this something that, you know, could be improved on, right? Somebody can take this and, you know, improve it. And, mm -hmm. you know, the other, the other thing about this concept is it's also hotel. I mean, you know, let me go to the interior images. So we also, we wanted to start off with the idea that this is a hotel first and then a stadium second, right? So what does that mean? Well, we wanted, like, we wanted to see how many rooms can we fit in. This roughly holds about 830 rooms. This is a rough take on it. And again, just this, you, you could just only imagine, right, this giant LED screen that just covers the whole entire surface area. Um, it, you know, and we also ran into the problem of, or the, not a problem, but just the question me and my friend were, were saying, do we want this to be a retractable roof? Um, mm. it's, this is Las Vegas, right? Like, do is there ever going to be a moment where you want to be out in the sun during the summertime? And so then we, we were like saying, okay, well, no. Like, what if the roof was stationary and it does not move, right? Like, let's let's design this way. And so we said, you know what? If it's not going to move, why not have some some kind of cool lights? You know, like in Tropic the Tropicana. I'm, I'm referencing the Tropicana, which a lot of people say is the worst stadium to play in. But I feel like, you know what, let's enhance that experience, right? And just make this one giant LED screen. Right. And it, it, you can control it, right? So like, in, you know, in between innings, right, the whole board is lit up. Um, 
while the game is going on, you can shut off the top of the dome, right? Only have the the outfield like a little crescent, right? So you could actually see like the uh, you know replays and the counts. But again, like the players, right? A pop fly will not obstruct the players' view. That is something else. You could almost have a you could have that roof for any kind of celebration you wanted to. If you wanted to have a a kind of festive, you know, indoor fireworks, but beyond that, or, I mean, all yeah, kinds. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Like the, you know, you start to like, start to uh, use your imagination. Like, yeah, this could be like a fireworks show, as you mentioned. Right. Um, it can, it can be like a cloudy rainy day and it's like a hundred degrees outside. Right. Like <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a, you know, you can control, you know, this space and also taking that whole idea of the, uh, right. The, compressing the ballpark and creating these unique different zones. So this could very, oh, here's the backside of it, like where the hotel rooms are. So again, and that, you, have know. Fun, you know, and you, you know how they, they pan around the stadium, they get like kiss cams and all that. Can you imagine somebody's face projected? <laughs> I mean, uh, like hundred feet across. <laughs> that would be a whole, that would be a whole new level of entertainment. <laughs> but I, I, I can't even imagine what they're going to do. But <laughs> I mean, that's, a, that's 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 what's great, right? You could just, you know, question it. I don't know. Um, so I, could, I could go, if you go back one, yeah, those, yeah. those are hotel rooms uh, in the uppers, right? Yeah, right, in the pink. Everything in pink. They're all hotel rooms. Wow. I mean, it also reminds me of, uh, and Star Trek has the concept of the holodeck. So you could take, you know, you could take that concept and quite literally, um, with the, with the ceiling, uh, do all kinds of conceptual uh, shows and layouts. You could, you could take the A, what the A's do is they have Star Wars night, right, and they show the fireworks and the music. Well, they could actually show a Star Wars scene up there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 that's what you could do there that you couldn't do in an open air stadium. Uh, you can do it anywhere right now. There's no no place else in the world, no place in the world right now could you do that. This would be a first. Right. Even uh, even at MSG Sphere because MSG Sphere is not set up for sports, right? And so right. it wouldn't make any sense to show that kind of thing. But here, wow. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine, right? Like having the fans, right? Like for Firework Friday or Friday Night Fireworks, right? They're yeah. like laying on the grass, and then they all have like three D goggles, right? And you just yeah. put down a beach towel, right? And then you just look up, and you can just only imagine, right? Like what would be displayed. I mean, the possibilities, right? Again, this is not just for baseball, but this is a hotel. It's a casino. It's a restaurant. It's it's a, again a one of a kind experience. Like you can, you know, I was also thinking on the sides, you know, like how you know how we have a top golf. Well, why not have something like baseball related, right? You have like tees or like you know ball tosses up and you hit the ball out to the field. Maybe there's a net. Um, you yeah. know how you know how they extend the net uh, past like the, the foul lines. Well, yeah, have like the player or have like fans like hit the ball into the net. Um, during games, like, would be insane, right? I don't know. Jay's Bencourt says these concepts are sick. <laughs> yeah, this is like, again real rough, but like, you know, you'll have like the casino up and right. Again, New York, New York would be your view. Uh, restaurants, again, like the, the possibilities here for a new ballpark. I feel like this is what the, the new, this is a 21st century ballpark. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that. You hit the nail on the head. In fact, Godfather Media says, uh, uh, who's a, actually uh, Joseph Amanduras of Zeni 62 says just tuned in interesting idea. So it's a hotel that has a major league ballpark inside of it. Could right. the ballpark have see through ceilings and walls, giving the feelings of being outdoors? That's an interesting question. How about that, Ben? Oh, for sure. I mean, why not? Like we have the technology for, you know, the, the screen, it, like uh, for it being like a transparent led screen. Like we we've seen it. We can do this stuff already. And, you know, that how cool would it be, right, to have it displayed, you know, outside the city, right? You'd actually see the hotel of New York, New York, Excalibur, MGM, Grand. So you'll think you're outside, but you're really inside. Yeah. You're, in the, I mean, you're in the matrix. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think if I can show this, he says, unless it's all very cool, but during a game, a natural field, let the day weather be what's yeah. over the players. Yeah. But I think in this day and age, with a different kind of grass, 
that's less of an issue, huh? Right, exactly. Uh, it, we would have to then go look at, um, I believe the Texas Rangers, I don't think they have real grass, to be quite honest with you. I mean, you'd, I have to you know, correct me on that, but I think they play on artificial turf. Yeah, there's a, there's a blend now. It was not field turf. It's something more advanced than field turf, but um, it, it solves the problem regarding growth and the indoor-outdoor dichotomy. That's less today than it has been uh, in some time. However, um, uh, that said, there are retractable grass examples like the ones you show. He, I, I, a lot of you just showed up, but Ben has another concept of roll in, roll out for soccer, for soccer and baseball that can apply to that grass con yeah. uh, concern because to Los Mills, uh, con uh point, uh, UNLV wanted a different kind of turf than the Raiders. You know, hence, mm -hmm. the, you know, the roll in, roll in, roll out uh, design. So um, I don't want to paint a picture that that's not a concern. It is. I'm simply saying that for yeah, those yeah. who used to, you know, save, save money, uh, the cost issue is not what it used to be. That's all I'm saying. Right. And exactly right. Like these questions are, you know, they're great to ask, right? Yeah. Is this going to be artificial turf? Is this real grass? Like, what is it? Right. And you have to make those, you know, decisions, you know, once you decide to go with a permanent roof, it's like, okay, yeah. How are you, what kind of plane service are you going to have? Hey, can you talk about the grass kind of uh, on the roof there? Is that a park? I no, 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 for sure. I mean, you know, again, it's it's that question, right? Is this a green park? Is this open to the public? Is this a special place just for the the hotel guest, hmm. right? Hmm. Is this is this like is it a pool up here? Are they like is it like cascading down? Is it like a, an amusement park up here, right? You just put a, a, a canopy over it. Is hmm. it like you know you could have like giant slides like coming down. Um, right. Like it, it just begs the question, right? Like the, the possibilities, right? Like what can this be? You know, we, the thing with the Oakland A's concept is you have this really cool green park on top of the stadium. And, you know, that's just extremely expensive. The, the difference here is you are building the hotel. So the shape of the hotel is the circle that you see here. Mm -hmm. So now you have the structure to place the green park on top of it. Right. Where, whereas the Oakland A's, right, you had to build that from scratch, right, or from the ground up. You mm -hmm. could say you, you're building it on top of the concourses, really, mm -hmm. of the ballpark. But even then, right, like, it just makes a lot of sense, you know, to have it on the hotel. Yeah, sure it does. And, you know, what you're doing with this is you're fusing, you're making this really a multidimensional uh, venue. And what I mean by that is you have baseball, of course, and, yeah, we know that, with venues of this type, we can hold up to several hundred different types of events. But my point is, in terms of major revenue producing event functions, you got baseball, but then also you have the venue itself as mm -hmm. an entertainment tool because it's showing you on its roof these images, it's showing the images outside. Uh, it's doing something that no other building in the world at this point uh, does that's designed for sports that's you know, as opposed to MSG sphere, which is designed for a concert. This is different, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, because nowadays, right, you can't just rely on the sport itself, right. To generate fans, to bring people over to the game, right. People want to see something new. They want more. And I feel like this is, this is giving them that, you know, it's like, Hey, you, you know, you're not a baseball fan, but you need a place to stay in Vegas, stay at this hotel. There's rooms. Okay. You go there. And next thing you know, you, you watch a baseball game just by accident because you have a room and, you know, and now you've, you've probably made a fan, you mm -hmm. know, you probably end up liking it. So again, this is not, you know, baseball first. This is hotel first. This is entertainment first. At the end of the day, sports is entertainment. It brings us all together. Now, I remember from, the Giants early talks regarding uh, Pac Bell Park before it was finished, what we now call uh, Oracle Park. Uh, yeah. I believe that the majority of fans are casual, you know, and they, they're drawn for other reasons to to a sports event. And this is, this really is that, why are you going to the baseball stadium? stadium? Well, I want to see the stadium. You know, how many times do you see that or hear that, right? Right. Uh, you will hear that in the case of the Raiders with Allegiant Stadium or SoFi Stadium, but because they're new. But 
at the end of the day, the novelty wears off because the design is still traditional. Exactly. This, exactly right. You know, this is non-traditional. This is different. It, it's, you're creating a new typology, pretty much. This is, yeah, this, is this is not a stadium. This is not a hotel. Like, what is it, right? Like, we're mm -hmm. combining all these different products together. It's like, you know, these different, you know. Yeah, I'm just. <laughs> it's just a fun. This is a fun concept. That's all I can say. I had a lot of fun doing it, and just makes me wonder, like, yeah, what's next, right? Yeah. This was all. This is only five. This is like I said, six, seven days of work. Um, I. You know, I'd love to work on this full time, so <laughs> and really flush out the design and you know see, you know how re uh, much of a reality it really is. You know, one thing I we talked about off camera was having some uh, artist renditions of what it looks like from ground level when a person walks up to it. Yeah, you know, something like that, so that because I think, look, the more you flesh this out. And you you got viewers right right now. And the more you flesh this out, mm -hmm. uh, the more you're creating your own market for this thing. Uh, and what I mean by that is where somebody will say, you know what, I want to I want I want to build that for sure. Uh, something like it, maybe maybe a baseball organization. Who knows, right? Um, so I think you're more than on your way with this because, it, as I said early on, and I think people now agree with me. This can set the tone for the net for baseball for the next the next 50 years easily yeah because now yeah you'll now have like theme hotels right i think we're starting to see that now where you know it's not just, okay sure it's a hotel it's where i'd stay but like what else do you have to offer and you know having theme hotels right can you imagine you know we'll use like the oakland a's as an example this is the oakland a's hotel this is mm -hmm. the oakland a's ballpark right it's it's a hotel that's centered around baseball I, mean, yeah. I you know what was that? Oh, I was just going to say perfect for the World Series because you don't have to worry about the room blocks. You control them. Boom. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You have the hotel rooms. You have the conference space, right? Like, this is baseball's new headquarter, potentially. Yeah. yeah. This could be, you know, the home of any – I mean, if the A's elect to stay in Oakland, this could be the expansion Las Vegas uh, franchise, you know? Man, it, how, it, how, on, on, on another note, I, I'd like to see the Rays over here. <laughs> oh, you want to see that? <laughs> Trying to get the Rays out of Tampa Bay? <laughs> Man, they're already going to Montreal. There's like uh, rumors on that. So, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. A, there's a there. Are, I know Phil Ruffin. I've read at least. I don't. I've never. I haven't had chance of meeting him, but he has said repeatedly he wants Major League Baseball in Las Vegas and. If you turn up to the other site, that's actually his site, uh, the uh, uh, Las Vegas Fair, Fair Festival Grounds um, is the other, the, yeah, that one. That's his site. You were saying something about the ability to put additional uh, space. That's all his space. So behind that, yeah. um, you could all build yeah, right there. Yeah, you could build there too, right? There's so much room back here, but uh, one, one comment I, I was seeing when I would post this and on Twitter, um, everybody saying, where are we going to park? Where are we going to park? Right. And yeah, that, that is a really big issue, right? How are people going to, you know, come in to the ballpark, at least with the Tropicana site, you have the train, right? You have the rail system that's, mm -hmm. that passes through here, right? So you can park at the, the convention center and you take the tram, you come over here. Monorail. Um, uh -huh. And the but trams. It, it, and the tram. Right, exactly. Right. And, you know, as here, right, we have room for parking um, because at the end of the day, yes, this is going to attract tourists for sure that are going to be staying on the strip. But at the end of the day, like this is a stadium for the city, for the people of Vegas, right? It's mm -hmm. not all tourists, right? You have locals that live here and it's important for them to be able to come in and out of the game, you know, without having that level of, um, uh, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's not complicated to get to the game. Uh, Joseph is saying this concept is being utilized throughout entertainment venues. When you think about Disney World doing a Star Wars hotel, which incorporates uh, LARPing, and um, so there you go. Yeah, I think he's absolutely right about that. And however, I think this goes a step further, where you've got diffusing in one compact venue per se. It's actually a big venue from their perspective. Yeah, yeah. Of different concepts, you know. 
Well, what's kind of cool is if you look at the, this is the Hilton, I believe. This yeah. Hilton hotel is the same thing as what you're seeing here, believe it or not. You have the hotel rooms that are right surround in, in the middle. This is like the turnaround, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's basically the stadium, right? So you have the baseball field here and then you have the hotel mm -hmm. circling around. So in a way, it's still a hotel. It's, right. it's again, it's a hotel first, stadium second. Instead Absolutely. of having instead of having like a, a pool in the middle, right? You have a baseball field. And circus circus is just behind that, right? Yes, it's over to the left. Right. The yeah, and so basically on uh, across the street, that Vanket area, mm -hmm. I believe you keep going in, that's the Las Vegas Convention Center expansion. Well, which where, is where that's, where would that be? That would be at the bottom. you can't see it here. Oh, okay. you, see that, you see that field. Well, that's uh, at the bottom right there. That used to be the Rivera where they tore it down. Um, that whole gray area that's across the street from, uh, yeah, right there. Yeah. And I know because I was at the groundbreaking for the convention center expansion in 2018 uh, there. Uh, and so, and then the fountain blue is just down a little bit there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Matthew Green asks, Jay's been court says entertainment destination. Yes. And then Matthew Green says, could they have an MLS as well as share the stadium? Yeah, we we actually uh, did cover that. Do you want to show him back again? Is that too much trouble to uh, pull that up? Well, so sure. uh, see it. Yeah, I mean, it could definitely. Uh, look, I, have I explored that route? Sure, I have. In terms of right, this can be used as you know baseball and soccer. But again, this is a different shape for sure. But you know. If you want to make it work, we, you know, it, it can be done. It's just a matter of right spend, you know, getting in there and actually figuring it out. And that's within the Stadium 51 concept right there, right? That is correct. So that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> This was just a quick mash. Uh, I mean, look again. These are these are my own personal studies. Mm -hmm. um, nothing is ever fully fleshed out because at the end of the day, you just have to you have to stop yourself. You have to say, okay, let's let's move on to something else. This, this is worn out. It's <laughs> like I could keep on modeling till you know till the end of day, but you know I I have to take a breather. Yeah, definitely. But again, look, it works, right? Just being able, like, it, it fits. You can, again, I remember uh, if I showed you the diagrams, right? You can move these columns in a lot closer, right? Reducing the span of the roof itself um, and to save yourself cost. And the only thing you would have to, you know, this concept has is it's not parallel, right? The third base side, it's not parallel with the soccer field, but the other three corners are, which is actually quite rare when you're seeing uh, baseball stadiums or right, soccer fields inside baseball stadiums. Yeah, I think the other um, question is how to how you treat the luxury suites versus the hotel rooms. And I'm just saying not as a I'm looking, yeah, yeah. I'm not looking for a definitive answer, but just <laughs> concepts because, you, you know, there's a lot of attention paid to the design, but also people have to circulate through it. And and I'm always fascinated as to what people do in it. Right. And what we're going to have them do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, on, on a micro scale, like uh, what, what's what's the favorite? What what area might become the favorite makeout place, and how do you design that so it really happens that way? You know, yeah. so you wind up using design to con actually quite literally control how people move. You know, around right, for sure. I mean, wow. you have to like you have to establish like which is the what's the zone? Where's the it place? Right? Where is the place that everybody wants to hang out mm -hmm. after the game? Right? Is it the set? Is it behind home plate? Is like this is intended to be some sort of a club up mm -hmm. here, right? Some sort of private space, right? Where you'd have like the hotel guests coming in. Uh, but th see, that's the thing with this concept is there's many you know places to actually you know make it some sort of premium product, right? Mm -hmm. You have like the casino yeah. up on top, maybe you know like and it would be a lot of fun, right, to go in and really study this thoroughly and you know actually figured out those places i don't think you can yeah. see here though but like th this little area here in left field this is more of like luxury restaurant seating styles of like you know, man i wish i had like a zoomed up shot of that but you know i'll, I'll take a detour you go back to the other one i wanted to show present an idea that uh, of which one did you want to show 
the, the the other one that goes where it has the long, one long go. That one, yeah. That reminds me of when I was forming the bid to bring Serbo to Oakland, and we had it so you can actually buy the entire east side of the Coliseum. And I'm thinking that um, it would be cool if you could actually, uh, if these were wild, so that these, so maybe a bank of these hotels, or this could be one section where a corporation could buy it or put their a logo on it as the ultimate, uh, the ultimate branding for. Um, so, so you're talking about separate uh, segmenting the hotel, in not not severely, right? Mm-hmm. But not, but just where a corporation or a group, if they wanted to, you know, given where costs are going, let's uh-huh. say they wanted to uh, provide a hundred million dollar rights deal uh, or north of that uh, interior, because a lot of it rights deals are exterior. But this would change that game. You would have, mm-hmm. and in, what I mean by a rights deal is we heard of naming rights, right? Right, right. I mean, we just saw Staples Center. Exactly. Well, you could have an interior rights deal. That is more <laughs> yeah. expensive than because of what this venue allows. So my so I'm thinking that yeah, yeah. it would be great to be able to sheathe that uh, or at least part of that in any kind of logo or image you wanted to, uh, and have the person or corporation or both pay for that. You know what I mean? Um, right. uh, I'm just thinking out, out loud about the possibilities that are opened up by this design. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it, no, it's great. That's what this is intended to do, right? So it's to start a conversation, right? Yeah. Like, you know, that's a great idea. You know, I'm sure, you know, other people will come up with their own ideas as well. And, you know, that that's what this is all about. It's to start a, co- a conversation, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, the Oakland A's, they kind of did it by saying, hey, this is a proposed site we're looking at. Right. There was no there was no restrictions. They didn't they didn't say it had to be a certain way. It had to be enclosed. It had you know, it was just the, the simple instructions that this is what we're kind of looking at. And that that allowed me to come in and say, all right, let me come up with some concept to, you know, to start a conversation. That's why I don't want necessarily put any like, you know, I don't want to say that this is how it has to be. It's like, no, it can be many things. Right. It opens the, the possibility. Let people uh, use their imagination. Mm-hmm. You want to put up the uh, URL for your website? What it's been? I'm uh, yeah, no, Ben Dash Garcia dot com. Garcia, I'm putting it up for dot com in case uh, anybody wants to go and check out his work or contact him. You know, there you are. All right, no, appreciate it, appreciate it. But I mean, look, this is what I, you know. This is this is a hobby of mine. This is going back all the way to high school. So as far as baseball stadiums go, I mean, this is something that I'm very passionate and, you know, I've been doing for a long time. And I just want, you know, I, it'd be a dream to, to be a part of, you know, an actual MLB stadium. You should be, you know, because like I said, uh, I go back to where I started in all of this. It was wrong to have this incredible work just sort of passed around the Internet. Like, it's in, you know, the next thing you know, it becomes um, – passed around and everything else and nobody knows who came up with it and it goes wildly out of control and I thought you know I need to do something to stop that before it starts because it was starting to start you know um and um I'm, I'm glad I did because this is this is stuff that is truly I mean I know that term next level is used a lot uh mm-hmm. but this truly is a, a next level and when I type the future of stadiums or stadium design. I have to be honest with you. I don't see anything like this, Ben. I don't see last time I saw a concept for stadium of the future. It was boring. I'm thinking that really isn't much of the future. You know, mm-hmm. I, 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 it, it didn't do anything. Yeah, right. it, it, it was it was a waste of my time to read it. I was I was really emotionally disappointed. Um, this makes up for that. You know, <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, it, this really is. This really presents a possible and um, I think more than people realize possible concept of state in the future, which I think should be in Las Vegas. Uh, and that's where you develop these. It just seems so right. Look at how it fits in the context right there. Right. You yeah, know, I feel, just, 
Yeah, I feel like, you know, all these ideas, they're not new. I mean, you hear a lot about it, like, at least, you know, in school, you hear it in conversation. It's just no one does it. No one's right. done it. Like, you know, I haven't seen anything on the internet. And like, you know, why not? Why don't we see something like this? And so, I mean, you know, like I said, with COVID, I had a lot of free time. And I said, you know what, let me let me take a crack at it. And even this concept, right, it only took me six days, really, me and my friend, uh, again, James, like James Bancourt, man, like, we 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 grinded for these past few days to you know to have this ready for you. This is James right here. Is he? I have no idea. It says James Benincourt right there in the uh, says entertainment destination. Hey Jim, you should have come in and joined us. I should have sent you a link. <laughs> you send it over to him if you want. I mean yeah, James is he's he's better at talking than I am. So yeah, let me give him an invite. Uh, uh, where do I? Um, what email do if, I if, if anything, I'll, I'll send him the link. I'll send it to him. Oh, cool. Yeah, because it, it works that way. It's universal. So, yeah. Yeah, no, but again, like, we had so much fun doing this. And, you know, you just got to hear it from him. Let's see. Uh -huh. You know, the other, inst the other design in Las Vegas that this reminds me of is Fashion Island. It has that sort Fashion of... Fashion Island. It's a shopping center. It has an orb. Um, so I believe it's called Fashion Island. It has a kind of an orb. Um, oh, let's look it up. Fashion. Uh, it's a shopping center on the strip. It has a kind of a bowl hat. Not a bowl, but it's more like a, a saucer. A saucer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah there oh, it is. A saucer. Yeah, there it is. That's what I'm talking about. Right. See that? There's some there's some visual cues there. And I, I mean unintentionally, but still, you know. But it also points to how how well contextually the design fits. Hey, uh, Mr. Bencourt, welcome. How are you? Hey, how's it? Out Outstanding. Pleasure to meet you and welcome. Uh, congratulations on this terrific uh, design effort. Uh, Jim? He probably has bad connection. No, it's not, it's not his fault. It's my fault. <laughs> yeah, how's it going, Zenny? Can you guys Great. That was me. Sorry. Uh, I'm not drunk <laughs> at all. I just. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. How's it going, Ben? Yeah. yeah, thanks for inviting me, guys. I appreciate it. I've just been kind of watching along, seeing all the, seeing all the action. <laughs> hey, man, this is man. Uh, action you had a hand in making happen. What do you, what do you think about this now that you've seen it, you know, rolled out? Oh, yeah. I mean, Ben and I, Ben, just amazing work. I mean, you've seen Area Fifty One concept. You've seen his portfolio. He's a doer, and you know what? He's a he's a professional designer by nature has been designing stadiums since I think 14 and playing baseball since six. I mean, hell of a designer. Like, uh, hey Ben, by the way, who's your favorite baseball player? My Believe favorite or... baseball player? Oh, let's yeah. Go with, yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, great. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Herschel Walker. That's, just that's he's, yeah, just baseball. He's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Football player, baseball player, UFC fighter. I mean, he's a doer. <laughs> he, he definitely is. How about you, Ben? Uh, believe it or not, it's Matt Kemp. Matt Kemp's been my favorite player. He doesn't play anymore, but man, I love, I love, I love that when Matt Kemp was with wearing Dodger blue. I, I got to go with Barry Bonds. Uh, there you go. Um, Barry Bonds. I mean, just shows. This shows my age. Barry, Barry Bonds, uh, Sammy Sosa. Yep, yep. Mark McGuire and Jose Canseca. Yeah, that's that's when baseball was, you know, uh, you know, it brought back a lot of fan bases. I remember that was like the steroid era. I love the steroid era, believe it or not. I did too. I, I thought it was great. I, th I thought I remember um, I went to a press conference. It actually, was on Zenny sixty two on YouTube. Still, uh, Bud Selig, and I remember thinking that commission basically say, "Hey, you know what? I'll tell you the truth. I got rich off this stuff. I'm not going to do anything with these guys." <laughs> Because uh, yeah. it's true, but uh, but I think at a time when players uh, are not quite the stars they were then in terms of what they draw, 
I think for the future of baseball, a movie like this is beyond important, you know? It really is. Yeah. Uh, again, Zenny, I, hey, I want to say thank you for giving us, you know, the opportunity and the platform, right, to share this, you know, this idea, you know, and, uh, you know, share it with the, the rest of the world, as you put it. So, again, th thanks, thanks a bunch, man, for making this happen. You got it. Hey guys, stick around in the background. Oh, Jim, I didn't mean to mute. I, he, I think he muted himself. He had no, to it's okay. I didn't want to, my background noise, didn't want to intrude. Oh, right on. Hey guys, thanks a lot. Hey, let's stick around in the background and, and debrief. Oh, and Folks, share it around. Uh, and if you have any questions, again, here is Ben's website, ben-garcia.com. Right. His email is there. Well, also, also, also Instagram as well. I mean, it's on the it's on the screen, right? Benjamin Design ninety three and the James, as well. So, yeah, yep, they are all there, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna have them back to give us updates on this. This is not a one and done. And by the way, I'm gonna call out my friend if he's watching Scott Ropes in a Vital Vegas. Scott, please uh, give these guys some props on your blog and present the design because I think this is the future of Las Vegas, man. I really do. All right, guys, we'll see you in the backstage. Everybody again, subscribe to Zenny62 and bookmark openlysnow.com. That ends this broadcast. See you.